Hello, my name is Brittany Thomas. I am a master's student at the University of Illinois and part of the Dairy Focus team. Today, we're going to talk about the effects of rumen protected lysine that was fed to Holstein cows prepartum and the outcome on their calf. So our take home message from all of this was that rumen protected lysine that was fed to those cows can have an increase in growth and in feed intakes in their offspring. I am going to give a brief introduction as well as the methods and material that was used for this research. While lysine is an indispensable amino acid, which means it must be added into the cow's diet, we wanted to see if we could add that rumen protected lysine into the cow's diet and how it affected the cows and the calf. We added this rumen protected lysine supplementation to the cow's diet 30 days prior to calving. Once the cows calved, we separated the calves into two different groups, a control group which meant that their mothers did not receive any supplementation, or a pre-L, so that their mothers did receive the rumen protected lysine supplementation. We wanted to determine if these calf, cows that were fed um, the rumen protected lysine, how it affected their offspring's amino acid concentrations, as well as the growth and in intake. So for starters, we took 72 Holstein calves, 37 of them were male, 35 of them were female and we blocked them based off of their mother's blocking criteria. From here, we took data of birth weight, weekly measurements, and feed intakes for the first 56 days. This slide shows how the treatments were broken up. So the first column shows cows that were either control C or that lysine group L. Once they calved, their offspring could either be a male or female, and they also could be in the control group or the pre-lysine group. So as you can see, if a control cow had a female, it was a control female calf, and so on and so forth. Now I'm going to talk to you about the results of my research. So let's take a look at those tables and graphs. So table one shows the body weight, average daily gain, gain of feed, and the measurements of those dairy calves. If we look at the mean weight of the calves from weeks one through eight, so the total of 56 days on trial, we can see that there's an interaction between treatment and time. We also can see that there is a treatment by sex interaction on the heart girth um, versus males and females. So this graph is set up as the time point on the x-axis and the body weight in kilograms on the y-axis. This figure shows the body weight of the, those total weeks the dairy calves were on trial. As you can see in that first six weeks, which would have been their wet period, you can tell that the control males outgrew um, all groups. However, you can also see that the control females were the lowest group by week eight. This second figure shows the average heart girth of the total 56 days as well. You can see that the males outgrew the females in the centimeters of their heart girth. You can also see that the control groups out measured that of the pre licensing group. Here is a table of the intakes of dry matter, crude protein, and the energy that those calves used. So in the first six weeks uh, for the milk replacer, you can tell that the pre lysine group had an increase in all three of the dry matter, crude protein, and energy that was used compared to that of the control group. To conclude, calves that came from those dams that were fed the rumen protected lysine had an improved overall growth and intake from those of the dams that did not receive the supplementation. Now I want to 
thank Edgimoto for supporting this research as well as all the feed companies that donated supplementation for the cows. I also want to thank the University of Illinois and the Dairy Focus team for help making this research project possible.